here's something people don't know about you. You coined the nickname Primetime. You gave him the nickname Prime. Yes, I did. I did. How, how'd that come about? Well, um, and, and determine what are needs and what are wants. And then I got to cut out the wants. That's how I create $1,000 a month to be able to invest. So if I'm making, so if I'm making two thousand dollars a month and I'm spending two, but really I'm spending a thousand on things that I really shouldn't be spending on. Now I got that thousand and I can start putting in something mm -hmm. to multiply. Yeah. So that's the second thing. You got to have a plan, have a personal budget. And then the third thing is you got to stay out of consumer debt, right? We 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 got to stay out of consumer debt, high interest rate credit card debt, and then high interest rate loan debt. What I found is. Most people who get themselves in credit card debt, they use their credit card as their emergency fund. It's their safety net. Okay. See, because they're already living a lifestyle where their primary income that's coming in is not enough. Back to what you said, sure. their income is here, but the expenses are up here. So what do they do? They go to the credit card as their emergency fund or their safety yeah. net. Yeah. To and make up their gap. And that's it. That's, that's that a, gap is 17% interest. That's what I'm saying, though. But in yeah. America, because of our the way our economy is set up, it, 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 you know this, this, this capitalism thing, this, this uh, consumerism thing, it, it forces people to use their credit cards because they don't have an emergency fund. They don't have a three to six month uh, of their expenses tucked away in a, in, a, in, a, in a savings account or a money market account. So if they do get a bump in the road, they don't have to go to the credit card. They can go lean on that emergency fund money. But most of us don't have that. So we use the credit card as our emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so we got to stay out of that because every dollar I'm spending to, to pay interest on credit card debt yeah. or pay interest on a high interest rate loan, that's money I'm taking away from building my financial freedom. Sure. Getting to my future, my, my freedom, right? Mm -hmm. So so I got to cut that out. Yeah. And then the last thing is I got to save and invest. Right? I got to save and invest. So if I'm living on less than what I make, right? That means I got money left over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm living on a plan. I'm only buying my basic everyday necessities. I'm staying out of credit card debt. So none of my money is going to make someone else wealthy. And then the last thing is, is I got to start taking that money and putting it in something that will multiply it. And that's where I come up with the big three. Real estate investing, stock market investing, and businesses. Those are three asset classes yeah. that the majority of the people who have built wealth in this country and around the world, they use those Absolutely. three Absolutely. to build wealth. Like I said, I watch your channel and I try to learn what I can. But one thing I've learned just living my life, having you know, done the nine to five, having been an entrepreneur, is that you can't save your way to wealth because you don't have enough left over in a savings account, I don't know, Rich, I don't care if you got $20,000 in, at the end of the month, there's 20,000 and two cents. Right. Now the bank is making 15, right. 17, 20% using your money, but you get about two cents a month off of it. Of course. And so you cannot get wealthy savings. So at some point, like you said, you've got to have that uh, accelerant, a multiplier. You do. Like I put 500 in and it grows to 550. Sure. You know, I put 1,000 in and it grows to 1,100. Sure. And over time, that's how it works, at least, at least in American capitalism. Sure, sure, that, that, that is exactly how it works. I mean, what you want to do is, is you want to take that $500 a month and you want to multiply it. Mm -hmm. and, and we multiply it by investing it in things that can multiply it. So if I, so if I buy a, a real estate property and, and it's a single family home or a duplex and I put a tenant in that property and that tenant pays me $1,500 a month, and my expenses on that property are seven hundred fifty dollars a month. Now I've just created seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Right. And don't let it be a duplex, and you live on the other side. That's what I mean, though. So, so, <laughs> so, so you, you, yeah. Or, or if I say, well, okay, I don't know anything about the stock market, but I know, I know people who have built wealth using using the stock market by Absolutely. buying paper assets. I can look at something like an S and P five hundred. ETF or index fund, mm -hmm. and 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 look at the historical yeah. track record of it, and that's what I try to encourage people to do. Don't just listen to what I'm telling you. Go out online, do some fact finding. Mm -hmm. All you, all this stuff is available online. Yeah. You d d d see what the S and P 500 has done over the last 90 years. Look at what the average return has been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
And, and that will give you some indication if I take my $500 and I put it in there, history tells me this is what I could potentially sure. expect. Now, this sure. is not guaranteed, but, but, but history sometimes will help us determine what the future may be. Sure. And that's why I try encouraging people to do is, is, yes, we want to have our savings account for our emergency fund. But by no means, like you said, you, your savings account is just not going to multiply your it's money not. enough to create passive income so that you don't have to always make active income. Mm -hmm. And some I, I, you I tell some of the folks that from my limited knowledge base that sometimes you can't afford the main thing, but you can afford the things that supply the main thing. Here's an example of that for me. So California is one of the world's leading economies. Sure. You know, if it were a nation, it'd be number six in the world or something sure. like that. Sure. What they're going to in the next 15 years, 90% electric vehicles. Mm. They got to come from somewhere. Now, you may not be able to afford stock in Tesla, but you can afford stock in the chip makers that power the batteries that make the car work. Yeah. And if you sit on that for the same time you're safe, so $100 into that chip maker in 15 years, yeah. you could be looking at 10 grand. $100 in your savings account, you'd be looking at $105. Sure. It, it, again, it, it, it just depends. And I tell people, you know, financial freedom is different for Everybody, it is. your financial freedom is going to be different than sure. mine. Absolutely. So what I tell people is when you think about what you want your lifestyle to be like at some point in the future, I think you got to answer three questions. you gotta, you got to figure out what your target date is. you got to figure out what your target amount is. And then you got to figure out what your target net worth needs to be. Because, mm -hmm. see, the net worth is what creates the passive income. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a 30-year-old guy, and I say, you know, by the time I'm 50, I'd like to have $10,000 a month coming in in passive income, right? So, so now I have my target date, mm -hmm. which is 50 years old. That's my target date. My target amount is 10,000 a month. Now I just need to determine what my target net worth needs to be. So I tell people do a simple little exercise called a rule of 200. I take the $10,000 a month in projected income that I'm going to need at 50 years old, I times it by 200. That's $2 million, right? Okay. So if I want to create $10,000 a month in passive income over the next 20 years from 30 to 50, I need to build my assets to about $2 million. Now, once I get those assets to $2 million, I take a conservative rate of return of around 6%, which creates $120,000 a year in passive income. Divided by 12 yeah. is 10 grand a month. So now at 30 years old, I know yeah. what my goal is. I'm smiling because I ain't never heard it broke down so right. beautifully. That's it. Yeah. And now I know what my goal is, and all yeah. I got to do now is just get my butt out there, follow those four financial principles I talked about, live on less than what I make, live on a plan, stay out of debt, save and invest. And once I get to my two million number, or whatever that number yeah, is, whatever it is for you, yeah. once I get to that number, now I don't have to trade time for money anymore. See, anytime I gotta go out and do something in order to make money, that's trading time for money. What I really wanna do is just take my active income and at some point turn it into passive income, yeah. where my assets create that income for me, yeah. not me Absolutely. physically having to go out. Absolutely, because for me, Richard, and, and um, like this conversation, y'all, was this was unscheduled, unscripted. Right. This this happened. This was providence, not coincidence. Right. For me, the bigger word has in financial freedom has always been freedom as in time. So, you know, and so I don't even worry about that X amount. Like I know what it takes yep. for me to sustain and to grow. But if I have to spend, like you said, eight, 10, 12 hours a day getting that, am I really winning? When there's exactly. a way to do that same amount of money in two hours a day. Exactly. Perfect. And have the rest of myself. So I'm into the, the freedom part of financial yeah. freedom, not trading a job for a job or trading no. work for work. Because right. it's the time part you're trying to eliminate. Absolutely. It's, it's more time, more freedom, more choices. Mm -hmm. That's what financial freedom gives you, right? It doesn't mean you don't have to go out and continue working. Sure. Your, but it, what yeah. it gives you is choices. Yeah. See, for me, when I was a banker Absolutely. for 25 years, I had to give my employer 
eight to ten hours a day. I made a great living, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna give them that eight to ten hours Certainly. a day. I'm not gonna get that great. I'm not gonna get a check. Yeah. So what I said to myself was, at some point, I still want that great living, but I don't want to trade eight to ten hours a day to get it. Yeah. I want to be able to have control a hundred percent of my time, mm-hmm. and I want to control a hundred. Uh,